Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, July 30th, 2012. Our first story comes from the world of evolution. Researchers at Georgia Tech have successfully inserted an ancient gene into a modern organism. Or to put it a more awesome way, paleo experiment evolution. Now unfortunately, it's not as exciting as Jurassic Park. Only a single ancient bacterial gene is being inserted into a modern bacteria. However, the gene being studied and its protein product are essential for bacterial life. And this type of mechanism is found in all life as it relates to the synthesis of proteins. To understand the importance of this protein, here's a quick review of protein synthesis, aka translation. Messenger RNA acts as the instructions for protein assembly inside a ribosome, and transfer RNA carries amino acids to be matched with the mRNA sequence. So this protein essentially helps move transfer RNA to the free site of the ribosome during protein synthesis. The vital nature of the gene makes it ideal for this kind of research, as any difference in it would have a drastic impact on the organism. Now the sequence they were inserting is approximately 500 million years old and was carefully engineered to replace its modern counterpart in the genome of E. coli. From there, eight identical strains were grown and studied in the hopes of replaying evolution. As expected, the ancient gene wasn't as efficient, resulting in a loss of fitness, the bacteria multiplying about twice as slow as fully modern organisms. After about 500 generations, however, the modified E. coli were equal, or even slightly surpassing average division speed, so their genomes were sequenced. Interestingly, the ancient gene didn't accumulate mutations, but instead, others related to it did. The proteins, and the genes that code for them, changed to compensate for the less efficient protein synthesis mechanism. It's these interesting results, even with just a single gene, that give researchers unique insight into evolution and encourage more studies like this. Next is an update from the world of genetics and isn't a discovery or project, but instead news about science. Because the European Medicine Agency is recommending commercial approval for a gene therapy for the first time. Gene therapies are when diseases are treated by inserting or replacing a gene, usually through a harmless viral vector. They have great potential with many at varying stages of clinical trials, but as you probably guessed, some risks. The only other gene therapy with this level of approval is one in China that targets cancer. So this is obviously an important step for gene therapies in general, but also for this one, which treats LPLD, which is an extremely rare genetic condition you've probably never heard of, affecting only about two or three people in every million. Normally, muscle cells produce an enzyme that breaks down fat globules in the blood, but people with this condition have damage to the gene that codes for the enzyme. Without it, fat globules can clog blood vessels, especially around the gut and pancreas, causing severe pain and inflammation. The gene therapy only allows people to produce 5 to 10 percent of normal enzyme levels, but has been rigorously tested and decreases pancreatic pain by up to 60 percent. It's also proven long-lasting. People involved in a trial from six years ago are still showing positive effects. Approval is not totally guaranteed, but extremely likely following EMA's recommendation, and will hopefully begin a trend of helpful gene therapies becoming more common. We end with a story from the world of technology, specifically a breakthrough in computational biology. Scientists at Stanford have, for the first time, created a computer model that can essentially simulate an entire living cell. This is an important development because right now an issue with biology research isn't gathering data but understanding it. Technology to analyze biology has gotten better, faster, and cheaper, making it sometimes difficult to interpret and connect to the massive amount of data being produced. Still, genetics, a major avenue of biology research, mostly uses the reductionist approach of knocking out a single gene to see what happens. Even though we know that most mechanisms within a cell involve the interaction of many genes and their products. Unsurprisingly, the organism that the computer model was made of was a bacteria with the smallest genome of any organism, with only 525 genes. Despite the simplicity, the computer model had over 1,900 parameters based on information from more than 900 papers. Once made, the computer model could help the scientists analyze interesting cell behaviors such as why the stages of the cell cycle varied in length but the overall life cycle didn't. 
What they found was a built-in feedback mechanism. If extra time was taken gathering nucleotides, then DNA replication would be faster, and vice versa. While this kind of computational biology has applications in research, it could also accelerate the development of biotechnology. Computer-assisted design removes a lot of the trial and error from other technological development, and with computer models like this, those benefits can now be applied to the complex systems within a living cell. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.